when we use the phrase going out into the elements, we're not usually talking about a mild spring day. It's when the wind and the water and the earth and the fire are showing their extremes. Like tonight, with the wind and the rain, the thunder, the lightning. And it's a theme of meditation. The physical elements. And thinking about how awesome and huge they are. The perception of the elements goes together with the perception of wilderness as a way of cleansing the mind of a lot of its small, everyday concerns, the concerns that loom so large otherwise, until you realize how small you are, or at the very least how small your body is. You're a little bundle of earth, wind, water, and fire here. That's one of the reasons why the Buddha recommends going out into the wilds, going out into the elements. Because it's a way of getting perspective. For instance, he talks about leaving a village and going out into the wilds. You sit down and you have that perception that you're out in the wilderness. And it's a very different perception from being in the village with human beings. whether the village is a small village in Thailand or the global village on your TV. You come out here and those concerns just drop away. When you think of yourself being surrounded by nature, surrounded by wilderness, there's something of an edge to that perception. It's big. And there's some danger. You realize how small your body is and how vulnerable. It gives rise to a sense of awe sometimes. And that awe is a useful emotion. It's very close to Sangwega. In fact, one of the meanings of Sangwega is fear or awe, terror. That's one of the prime emotions in the practice, realizing how vulnerable the body is. This body that you care so much for, that you've looked after. Since you're able to look after it all these years. And it's such a small thing. The wind we had today, it could have gotten to the point of tornadoes, and who knows where the tornadoes could have landed. Could have wiped out the monastery, wiped out other people's homes, businesses. That was just the wind. The rain can wash things away. There have been fires that have come through here, through the immediate area. There have been earthquakes. These things happen all over the world. We see the results, say, of an earthquake, and it's shocking. Realizing that we live on an earth that can do this to human beings. As soon as you have the physical elements of a body, you're exposed to these things regardless of where you are. And when you're out in the wilderness, you're even more conscious of that fact. Years back, I was up in Alaska, or up at the Arctic Circle. And even though it was summer, which meant that it was relatively mild, still there was a very strong sense that for miles and miles and miles around, there was just nothing but nature, and nature didn't care about you at all. You could die, and it was totally indifferent. It gave rise to that sense of awe. 
And there's real help in practicing concentration, getting the mind to settle down. Because on the one hand, you realize that the disturbances of being involved in human society were not there. And nature seems so much bigger. Down here in the lower 48, wilderness is just little islands surrounded by civilization. But up there, it's the other way around. Civilization is little islands, and the wilderness is all around. And it's very sobering. That kind of sobering thought is very useful in the meditation. Sarabhuta recommends a similar reflection. Think about it, the different physical elements in the body. And realize that these elements are the same elements that you see outside when there's a storm, when there's a huge fire, when there's an earthquake, when there's a flood. And those elements outside can change in such radical ways. What about this little body you've got here that's composed of the same elements? Is there anything constant there? Anything you really lay hold to as yourself or yours? And he says the body just has a no. It denies your desire for ownership here. So it's useful to develop this sense of awe. It helps put things into perspective, that these things that we hold on to, the physical body, the affairs of our daily lives, the ups and downs, the concerns about what this person thinks, what that person says, what's going to happen to me, what's going to happen to the people I love. We all know eventually we're all going to die. One way or another, the elements are going to take over. These things that we've claimed to be us or ours, are going to show that they know nothing of our claims, they have no respect for our claims. And that sort of thought focuses you inside. Well, what have you got? Well, you've just got your awareness. You've got the mind. What shape is the mind in? Unfortunately, the Buddha doesn't leave us helpless here. All too often in the West, the, this sense of awe is left simply as an aesthetic sense or maybe just a vague religious feeling. But the Buddha gives you further instructions on what to do with it. You take that sense of the earth, and he says, you just think of the earthness of the earth or the windness of the wind. And you don't focus on any of the, the little details. And you make that the, the object of your concentration about how vast this is. your awareness to take on some of that vastness and then learn how to hold it there. If the elements seem threatening, well, think of the vastness of space, the space that penetrates all of this activity, the wind and the rain. It penetrates the walls of the, the sala the floor, the roof, everything. There's space in all directions all around us. And learn how to hold that there as a perception. That can form a basis for concentration. And the concentration can put the mind in the right state to reflect on things in their proper perspective. to look at where you hold on, what might be in your best interest to let go. If 
if you're looking for your happiness in something that the elements could destroy, well, don't think you have a special pact with them. They're large and overwhelming. But you can escape their influence. You can escape their power. That's what we're practicing here. To find something that's not subject to all this wind and rain and the movement of the earth, the potential for fire. This is a very useful contemplation on not-self. The impermanence of the elements, the stress of trying to find happiness in something that these things could destroy. As even if it's not being destroyed outright right now, these elements are just wearing away, wearing away the elements of the body, the faculties of the body, our abilities to see and smell and taste and hear. It really helps to think in these ways, to learn how to let go of the attachments that are causing the suffering that comes from clinging and craving, ignorance. So here we are in the midst of a storm. But there's something deep inside that doesn't have to suffer from the storm doesn't have to be threatened by the storm. And so even though we may reflect on the awesomeness of the powers of nature and how huge they are, there is something in the mind that's even more solid than they are. It can be found through our own efforts. And it offers a security you can't find in any place, because it's outside of places. There's a recurrent phrase in the canon, released everywhere, and it also means released from everywhere, every place. That idea is awesome, too. And it's always helpful to keep these thoughts in mind.